the Dark Tower of Baradur, the stronghold of the Dark Lord Sauron, from where his evil shadow spread out over the land, turning Mordor into a hellscape and spreading out beyond those borders in an attempt to consume the rest of Middle-earth. When we imagine tyranny and domination, it is the Dark Tower that comes to our minds, and it was a nightmare made physical for the free peoples of Middle-earth, all the way from its foundation in the Second Age, far into the Fourth Age, until long after its destruction. However, to some among the most ancient, it was not this dark stronghold that haunted their dreams. No, for them Sauron was but the second Dark Lord, and when they imagined darkness and terror, their minds drifted back to the Elder Days, when the darkness that covered Middle-earth came forth from the dark Vala Melkor Morgoth and his strongholds of Angband and Utumno. Welcome, Eldonyar. I'm happy to see so many new faces here, and I hope to see even more of you next time when we will look at what happened after the fall of Sauron, and who was to become the newest Dark Lord. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be reminded when the next chapter starts. But this week we ask ourselves, what was the home of the Dark Vala Melkor Morgoth in the Elder Days before Sauron rose to become the Lord of the Rings? And speaking of rings, we are happy to have come across Serpent Forge. A while ago, we were contacted by its founder Justin himself, who offered us one of his amazing rings, and I must admit, when I received the ring in the mail, I was blown away by the quality of the ring. When I chose the Nemean Lion Signet Ring, I had expected something wonderful, but what I have now on my finger is even more amazing. The intricate detail on this 100% sterling silver ring is so fine I can look at it for hours and still discover more. As an independent jewellery brand, Serpent Forge makes rings, cuffs and bracelets, and pendants and chains, for which he only uses the best quality silver, gold, and sometimes opal, sapphire, and other precious gemstones. And especially for you, Meldonyar, Serpent Forge offers a 10% discount on your first purchase. Just use the discount code on screen or in the description to claim it, and receive your very own piece of master crafted jewellery from our friend Justin. Thank you very much, and thank you very much to Serpent Forge for his amazing work. According to the ancient most legends, the world was once perfect and unmarred, and the Valar trod the land shaping it into a paradise as they had perceived it in the music of the Ainur. Yet in this, they faced opposition. Melkor, the first foe, who had opposed the theme of Iluvatar when he and the other Ainur had sunk creation into existence, had desired to claim all of creation for himself, and undid all the other Valar wrought to make Arda bright and beautiful. For countless ages, Melkor and the other Valar fought for supremacy over Arda, marring the land forevermore. But in the end, the Valar managed to overcome Melkor, and, as the first Dark Lord fled, start a time of peace known in legends as the Spring of Arda. But the Valar knew not whence he had fled. At this time, the world was illuminated by the two lamps, Iluin and Ormal, though there was one great scar from the First War that still cast a shadow over a small part of the world, the far northern Erit Engrin, the Iron Mountains. It was here that Melkor had returned to when re-entering Arda, to enact his vengeance and return to Dominion. 
Here the light of Iluin and Ormal was dim and cold, and here Melkor hid and dug and slowly and silently built his stronghold, his home. It was said that the halls of Utumno were dug deeper than anything known to living beings. Its pits dug so deep they were filled with fires, and its vaults and caverns so dark they attracted all evil in the world to gather under Melkor's dominion. And as his army of dark and fallen spirits grew, the far northern lands of Arda were made desolate, and would remain so forever after. From this stronghold, in times uncounted, before any but the Valar and Maiar trod the world, Melkor waged war upon his enemies. As the legends tell us, in the end he managed to overthrow the two lamps, breaking the lands and roiling the seas, destroying the home of the Valar, Almaren, all together, and casting the world once more in complete darkness. The destruction was so great and complete that the Valia Yavanna had to put all living things to sleep in order to have maybe some of them survive this night over Arda. After their defeat, the Valar made their way west, where they raised the Pelori Mountains and settled in Aman. Within the Valar, light still lingered, and they would not yield. This too Melkor knew, and as he saw the age of the trees dawn, with the first rays of their light, he began construction on a second fortress, located near the western edge of the Iron Mountains, to serve as a forward defense line against a future attack from Aman. Here too Melkor dug deep, and though his second fortress was the lesser of Utumno, the three piles of slag and rock he dug up and deposited at the southern end of his new fortress were so great they formed the highest peaks in all of Middle-earth. These three volcanic peaks would be the Mountains of Tyranny, or Tangorodrim in Sindarin, and they would be the gates of his new fortress. Though solid and as strong as the Iron Mountains themselves, they were hollow, and through their chimneys and channels Melkor let out poisonous clouds to choke his enemies and turn the lands before his new fortress into a dead waste. For this it was given its elvish name, Angband, the Iron Hell. These were the fortresses of Melkor from which his corruption spread through the land. His greatest fortress, Utumno, and the lesser but still bigger and deeper than literal mountain ranges, Angband. He had built them to withstand the might of the Valar, and as the years of the trees progressed, he knew their test would come too, for the children of Iluvatar were soon to awaken. As the first of the elves awoke at Quivienen, Melkor's darkness had spread from Utumno and Angband, and though there was still life in Quivienen, the dark clouds often blocked out the starlight from above and the further away from Quivian and shores, the darker the forests became. Though the first elves looked at the stars and learned to sing, they looked at the dark forests and learned to fear, for they knew what was in there. There was an evil hunting them, and they told each other stories of what was to happen with those who were captured by those evil powers. They were brought to the home of evil, to Utumna, as the Elder Quendi called it, where they would be brought before the Dark One in his throne room, be tortured and twisted until their spirits would be broken and the husks of their former selves would be distorted into the foul, orcish monsters that started to haunt the darkness around them more and more. The future of the firstborn of Iluvatar had become uncertain, and thus the Valar, in their desperation, attacked. 
The battle of the powers commenced when the Valar attacked Anmas, overwhelming Angband and besieging Utumno. For over a thousand years the Valar besieged Utumno, before they managed to break the gates of Hell, drag Melkor out of there in chains, and destroy his foul home. Destroy, so they thought. For even with all the might of the Valar, they only managed to destroy the outermost shell of both fortresses. The ruins still stood, and in the vaults of Utumno and Angband there still lingered countless evil beings and spirits, like the orcs and balrogs. But while Melkor was dragged to Valinor in chains, his servants began to rebuild his stronghold. So while the Valar and Elves enjoyed their bliss in ignorance, Melkor's rot grew once again in Middle-earth. After Melkor managed to deceive the Valar into releasing him, he seduced the demonic Ungoliant into ending the Age of the Trees with him, once more casting all of Arda into darkness. After which he fled to Angband, now rebuilt by his Lieutenant Sauron, as his primary stronghold, dug deeper and built greater once again, from which he could best torment and sow the seeds of destruction among the kingdoms of the elves. It was from Angband where the first werewolves emerged to ravage Beleriand. It was from here that the first vampires flew out. It was from here that Melkor Morgoth sent forth a sea of flames and poisonous gas to turn the once beautiful grasslands of Argalen into Dor Nufauglith, an ash-filled desert littered with the corpses of massacred elves and men, of mere soldiers, nobility, and lords and kings. And it was Angband where Melkor Morgoth tortured his victims. When Maedros the Tall, the firstborn son of Feanor, was captured by Morgoth, the Dark Lord did not kill him. No, he tightly forged a manacle around the Elf Lord's sword hand, and hung him by it off the sides of rebuilt Angorodrim, where he was given a clear view over the death and destruction that Morgoth wrought. For thirty years Maedros hung there, until he at long last was saved, though his cousin Fingon had to cut off his hand in order to do so. And thus, for the limited time that Maedros had left in Middle-earth, his captivity in Angband left him scarred in both body and soul. Similar when Hurin Talion, the head of the Manish House of Hador, and among the greatest mortal warriors, was captured by Morgoth, he was tormented by being chained to a chair high on the slopes of Thangorodrim, where through Morgoth's sorcery, he could watch the tragedies that befell his family. For twenty-eight years he was tortured as such, forced to watch everything he ever loved and held dear be destroyed, all from his throne above Unbound. As Utumno had been the source of all evil in the years before the Ages of the Sun, so was Angband the source of all evil in the First Age, where we knew evil in the Third Age to be slumbering everywhere, and only having Baradur and Sauron as dominating foci for its malice. In the days of Morgoth it did have a source, and only with the end of the Age would that source be broken. When the host of the Valar came out of Valinor, and ended the First Age with the War of Wrath, Angband would finally be destroyed. Thangorodrim was utterly destroyed when Arendil the Mariner slew Ancalagon the Black, the greatest of Morgoth's dragons, casting his enormous body down and crushing the mountain range. Eonwe, the Herald of Manwe and Chief of the Maiar, made his way down to the deepest depths of Angband, down to the throne room of the Dark Valar, where he cast down Morgoth, took his crown from him, and chained him. This time, when the Valar executed Morgoth, 
and his formless spirit fled to the timeless void outside Ea, Angban too would be permanently dealt with. The War of Wrath was so violent that the entire regions of Middle-earth were torn asunder. Rivers formed and changed, and even mountains were changed. With the physical destruction of Morgoth, nigh all of Beleriand fell below the waves of the Great Sea, and of the sparse points of land that would peak above the water, north of Angband was among those. And this is what remained of the homes of Melkor Morgoth, the first Dark Lord. Angband destroyed and cast beneath the waves, and Utumno was destroyed twice over to such an extent that today the place where it once was is only roughly known. Never again would Arda see their likes, and even the dread fortress of Baradur would be only a weak imitation of what once scarred creation like a festering wound. Thus we conclude this chapter and this video. Did the knowledge surprise you? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed it and would like to learn more of the inner workings of Arda, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of the next chapter in the Mysteries of Westerners, and learn what happened after the fall of Sauron and who it was that was to become the third Dark Lord. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be reminded when the next chapter starts. A great thank you once again to our friend at Serpent Forge, both for the amazing ring as well as his offer to you all, Meldunyar, as with this discount code on screen or in the description, you will get a 10% discount on your first purchase at Serpent Forge's Mastered Crafted Jewelry. But for now, I have been Irjikor Kuruvane, and I wish you all Namarie Meldonyar.